our White House. Uh, foreign Affairs correspondent Margaret Brandon is at the White House standing by. Margaret, you've been listening to Tillerson's remarks. I know sort of at the end he mentioned something about uh, implementing a, a new uh, approach towards North Korea, but it sounded like much of the same, same as what we've heard before. Uh, what's your take on what you've heard? Well, uh, the, in terms of the diplomatic toolbox, box, uh, sanctions certainly aren't new, but what Secretary Tillerson just laid out is a new way of using them, which is uh, really a veiled threat towards China and others who violate the existing UN Security Council sanctions on North Korea, saying if you are cheating, if you are trading with North Korea, we are leaving the door open to sanctioning you. That is a threat to other members of the UN Security Council, saying we are serious about cutting off any financial or uh, diplomatic lifeline to North Korea. Uh, we also heard the Secretary of State take uh, that pressure, economic and diplomatic pressure, to another level by saying here, we are calling on all countries here at the UN to uh, downgrade your diplomatic relations. Now, that's not something he can demand, but it's something he can ask, and it's certainly something that the U.S. can pressure others to do. His point there was uh, certainly there are a number of small Asian countries, Laos, others that I've traveled to who do allow guest workers from North Korea to come into their country and perform basic services, just like guest workers do around the world. But what Tillerson just said there was that you are, by allowing them to enter your country and provide any kind of service, you are giving them cash that is allowing the North Korean regime to continue to survive. So that's yet another pressure point that the United States is highlighting that they want other uh, Security Council members to exert some pressure on. So it's really a, a stranglehold that he is outlining here to economically cut off what few uh, means of of trade North Korea holds on to because it is, of course, the most sanctioned country in the world. Uh, but by having the Secretary of State uh, in the position of going up and chairing the special meeting on North Korea, you have him making this threat with the weight of the Trump administration behind him uh, that they will punish others who do not help the United States to really back North Korea into a corner and get them to agree to negotiations to give up their nuclear weapons. Margaret, how realistic uh, is the threat of those sanctions to members of the Security Council? Because presumably any kind of sanctions that are placed on them by the United States would hurt the United States. I mean, for example, if you take China, we export agricultural products to that country. Right. Um, soybeans, for example, some $15 billion back in 2012. Uh, if we decide to stop that trade with those countries, uh, what would happen to us here? Right. Well, you, you can't risk a trade war to achieve this, certainly with a country like China. But really what that reference was there, or my interpretation, um, having talked to diplomats working on sanctions in the past, is that they're looking at something like we saw during the, the years of the Bush administration, where they started sanctioning third-party entities, bank accounts uh, in Macau, an island off of China, where you saw North Korean officials or Chinese officials who were doing business with North Korea stash some of their cash. And once you start hitting key leaders in the pocketbook, it certainly gets their attention. And when the Bush administration started doing things like that, it did not go over well with the Chinese, but it did result uh, in getting their attention. And so uh, my feeling here, my understanding, is that this is a wink and a nod towards going down that route again, not blocking trade, but perhaps looking at targeting uh, financial accounts of those who uh, are doing any kind of transaction with North Korea. There's a limit to that, but remember, this is the type of strategy that uh, the Obama administration and the Bush administration really laid the architecture for uh, to, to isolate Iran, ultimately getting them to the point where they agreed to go to the negotiating table. Uh, it's not clear that that strategy will work with North Korea because, at least up to this point, it seems that Kim Jong-un is willing to go to any length, at any cost, to continue to develop this nuclear program. A very fine point that you make there, Margaret. We always appreciate your analysis. Thank you.